Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using the default X-Plane 11 Flight Management System, or as it's so often called in the community, Flight Management Computer. These systems can be found in high-performance aircraft and automate tasks previously performed by navigators and flight engineers. The system is made up of the following three components. The first being a Flight Management Computer, or FMC, and put simply, it's the hardware and software needed to run the system. It's not visible to the pilot in the cockpit, and it's usually located elsewhere in the aircraft. Number two, the control display unit, or CDU for short. It's a small screen and touch keyboard used to operate the FMS. We'll be using this primarily for our tutorial today. And lastly, number three, the multifunction display, or MFD for short. This can be one or more displays that provide the pilot with navigational progress, engine performance, and information about the aircraft systems. Okay, okay, I put you to sleep. Let's cut to the chase and demystify the default X-Plane 11 flight management system. Alright, we're now inside the default 737-800. If we scroll down, we'll locate the control display unit, but Notice that the yoke is in our way. If we press the Y key, we can temporarily hide the yoke, and again pressing Y will return it again. I can use the CDU just like this, but clicking on it once will open it up in a pop-up window that I can drag, close, and expand, and it's much easier to use. The index page is the first page that comes up, along with a warning that says nav data is out of date. If I click on the status page, we'll see that the database date is only valid from October 13th of 2016 to November 10th of 2016, so this error message is valid. I could pay for a subscription to something called Navigraph and keep this current, but for today's demo, we'll simply select the clear button to remove the warning. We'll now move on to database. Using the mouse, we'll enter in our departure airport, which is CYOW. Now we'll select on a dent, and will tell us all the information we need about that airport, including the longest runway, GPS coordinates, and the elevation. I can switch between feet and meters as well. If you're like me, you prefer the keyboard, so if you want to use the keyboard instead of the mouse, click between these two square brackets, also known as the scratch pad, until they start blinking. Now I can type CYUL, and select a dent and the information updates. Here's a piece of advice. As long as these boxes are flashing, anything you type on the keyboard will go into the scratch pad. So let's say you forget to click this off and then now you're about to land and you want to put your landing gear down. So you press G on your keyboard. Instead of triggering your landing gear, it's going to actually show up in the scratch pad. So make sure that when you want to interface with the plane, that you click between the scratch pad and make sure that it's not flashing, then anything you press on the keyboard will interface with the plane. Since the rest of this tutorial is going to be using the CDU, we'll go ahead and click it back on so we can use our keyboard. Now we'll proceed to the flight plan. We'll type in CYUL and set it to destination, CYOW and set it to origin. Doesn't matter which order that you do this. So we're going to be flying from Ottawa to Montreal. Company route, or CO route, is if I wanted to restore a previously saved flight plan. So let's say I had a flight plan called CYOW to CYUL. I could simply type that in and then click on company route and it would load it for me. Because I'm showing you this tutorial fresh, I don't have one saved yet, but I'll show you how to save one later. Flight number is optional but I like to fly with a WestJet tag, so I go Whiskey Juliet Alpha, and then I use today's date, 0722, and I put that in for a flight number. The next and very last step is to enter in our waypoints. So our first waypoint today will be AVVON, and we select two. Notice that the very first waypoint appears in magenta, and now we have this thing called execute with a blue line above it. If I don't click on the execute button to confirm the change, 
the CDU or FMS will not accept the change. So make sure you always confirm the change by clicking on the Execute button. To enter the next waypoint, we click Next Page, and then HABBS, and then again 2. Notice again the Execute button has a light over it, so we select it to confirm the change. If you look at the top left, it says Via Direct. So it means we're going directly to HABBS, or if I go back, directly to AVVON. If I wanted to follow an airway, I could enter the airway and then select this via here to go the airway to that waypoint. Now we'll move on to the climb phase by clicking the climb button. This page shows us everything we need from a speed perspective. We can see that as long as we're climbing, we won't exceed 290 knots or 0.74 Mach. We'll also see that when we're below 10,000 for an altitude, we won't exceed 250 knots. Let's say I want to go no more than 220 when I'm below 5,000 feet. I can simply enter 220 slash 5,000 and select this. Now, when I climb to 5,000, I'll be at 220. When I go from 5,000 to 10,000, I'll be at 250. When I exceed 10,000, I'll be at 290. The trans altitude is something that in the US and Canada is 18,000. This simply means that when you get to this altitude, you gotta start adjusting your cabin pressure. For this flight, we'll just leave it the way it is. Now we'll select cruise, CRZ. When we get to our desired altitude, we'll now be in cruise mode. And the speed that we'll be going is 300 or Mach 0 0.80. Again, if you wanna change this, let's say you want 290, Enter that into the scratch pad and then select that for your target speed. We'll go ahead and put 300 back. We now have to tell the CDU what our desired cruise altitude is. So for this flight, it'll be 13,000 feet. As we go through this, if any errors was to occur, it would come up on the bottom and say perhaps like, I can't reach that altitude and then we know we have to adjust our cruise altitude. So now we've done our climb, we've done our cruise. If we look at the descent button, we can see the same thing. The speeds that we descent at are pretty similar to the speeds that we climbed at. So I'll just leave them alone. If I want to go and um, land at a greater angle, like we'll say for the glide slope, I can type in say three and select the VPA. So now instead of a 2.5 glide slope, I'll have a 3 glide slope. The next step is the lags. So if we look on here, we'll see that we're going from AVVON to HABBS. It also filled in the speed, 300, and the altitude for that waypoint. And then after I reach that waypoint, you can see the next one says we have to start descent at a 3 degree slope at a speed of 290 and we have to be at 10,517. The problem is we're not complete yet. We have to select our departure and arrival airports, runways, SID stars, and whatnot before these legs are fully filled in. So if we go over here to departure and arrivals, we can now select the departure button and then our runway. When you select a departure, you always select the runway first and then we'll hit confirm. Now that I selected my runway, if I want to fly a SID, which is a standard instrument departure, I can select it on the left hand side, but only after I select the runway first. For the purpose of this tutorial, we won't select the SID. Now we'll go back to departure and arrival index, and now I'll select on my arrival. Opposite to the departure, you select the star, which is your standard arrival procedure, or your standard instrument arrival, before you select your approach. So we're gonna take the HABS 324L star. I don't see it on this page, so we'll hit next page. And there we have it, HABBS 3.24L. We select it and again confirm it. Now I have a choice. I can go ILS 24L, or RNAV, which is GPS 24L. We also got a warning that it's saying at the waypoint Titus, it can't get to 4,000 feet. 
I wouldn't worry about that yet because there's most likely some mistakes in the lags that I'll show you in a second. If we get the warning again after we adjust those lags, then we have to adjust our cruise altitude. So we'll select clear to get rid of that. And I'm going to select ILS 24L and again execute to confirm. Now we have everything we need. We've defined our departure, our arrival, the runways, the SIDS and STARS, our climb, our cruise, our descent. We'll click on legs and you'll notice there's a lot more than was there before. So we'll go ahead and look through all these. So far everything looks okay. Aha! On the next page we see something called vectors and then something called discontinuity. Both of these are bad and will break your flight plan. So you have to go through each of the legs and make sure you don't find vectors or discontinuity. So what we'll do is we'll select next page and we'll select the first waypoint that's a valid waypoint. So in this case SLOKA and then we'll go back and select the one we want to delete and then we'll execute it. So now that one was removed. So now again to remove vectors and you can see here the warning still happening on ABLE 4000 at Titus. We'll clear that and try again. Select SLOKA and then click on vectors and then execute to confirm that. Notice how that error message did not happen again. So that means that we're okay with our, our 13,000 cruise altitude. It just didn't think we could get there with that vectors and the discontinuity uh, on our screen. So now if we look through all our waypoints, everything has a number on the right. So we have our speed and our altitude. And you can see here we're going to start climbing here at runway 25. We're going to get to our 13,000 crews at AVVON. As long as we stay underneath 16,000, so that B means below, so as long as we stay below 16,000, we're okay at HAPS. But the second we get to Como, we need to start our descent, and we're going to go down to about 11,511. We hit next page, you can see below 9,000, then this, above A, above 4,000, and then finally at SLOKA, we have to be at around 3,000 to in intercept the ILS. So that's pretty much all there is. You can also see here how many nautical miles to reach the waypoint. And there is something here that says auto or inhibit. If it's set to inhibit, it won't automatically advance to the next waypoint. So once you get to AVVON, it won't go to HABBS unless this is set to auto. So just always leave it on auto. You can view this, so just like we went through the lags and we hit next page to see some of these things. If we go up here and we select this button over here to plan mode, there we go. Notice how at the bottom this now says step. I can now step through each waypoint and you'll notice on the multifunction display here that we'll see that particular part of the trip. So again, I'll hit step step through it again. In each step you can see all the valid waypoints of our flight. That's very useful to make sure that by mistake you didn't enter in the wrong waypoint. Now that we've confirmed everything though, we'll go back off plan to our regular map mode which is much easier to see our waypoints. We'll go back here to the index and then we'll select route menu and let's save this route. We spent a lot of time entering this route so in case we want to use it again, we don't want to lose it. So we can click on the pilot route list and then give it a name. So again, we'll click in the scratch pad and I'll say CYOW to CYUL. And then I select the store button here. And now it shows my route save. If I go to the flight plan screen now, notice how the company route is now filled in with that flight plan. That is how I know that uh, I'm using a safe flight plan. The other option is I can go to the index page, route menu, and then pilot route list, which is where I saved it from, and now I can see that flight plan. So there's two ways for you to enter your or to load your flight plan. From the flight plan page, you can type your flight plan name into the scratch pad and then select company route. It might be okay if you have a couple of them, but if you have a lot of flight plans and you're not going to remember what they are, this isn't the best thing. 
but that is an option. The other option, again, go to Index, Root Menu, Pilot Root List, and just simply click this button. Now, when you first start playing with the CDU, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And there's no real button on here that says reset this thing back to default so that you can start over again in practice. And it sure gets annoying having to close X-Plane and reopen it again. So there's a trick. Enter in a different origin and it'll reset the entire CDU. So let's say instead of CYOW, I'll just enter the destination into the origin. So CYUL and put that in. Now everything's wiped out so I can start fresh and put in my flight plan. So again for demonstration purposes we know that I saved a route called CYOW to CYUL. I can click on co-route and there we go. Everything's filled in. My flight plan, my lags, it's all good to go. So that's one way and I showed you the other way through the index page. The last thing I'm going to show you is something called direct intercept. So let's say by mistake you forgot to remove the vectors. So in this case we'll say Habs is the vector. We'll just pretend it is. So if I click on direct to, I want to bypass Habs for some reason. Uh, like I mentioned, maybe I forgot to remove vectors or discontinuity and now I'm in the air and I can't really shut the flight management system down and restart it again. So the only option I have is this direct to. So I'll clear the scratch pad here again by selecting clear and I'm going to select Como and then over here with this little arrow I'll select it and then execute. I'm now going directly to Como and I'm bypassing AV, AVVON and Habs. I'll show you one more trick. Let's pretend I want to go directly to um, let's say Titus. I select Titus I go back up here, but if I don't click execute, let's say I made a mistake, I can select cancel mod over here and it undoes that change. So again, you have to select to confirm to, to tell the flight management computer that's what you want to do. If you made a mistake, all you have to do again is click on that cancel mod. So let's do one more time, Titus, the arrows, again if I select exec, it's going to go to Titus. However, if I select Cancel Mod, it'll just reset it all back. So that is the flight management system, flight management computer, control display unit, or whatever you guys prefer to call it. But it's something that will take some practice. Uh, it's something that took me almost a week of flying three hours a night to really understand. And this is just the flight management part. I haven't showed you how to put this together with an autopilot. So I'm not going to do that in this video because it's already quite long, but I'll follow this up in the next few days with a video of the 737-800 following the same flight plan but using the autopilot and then we'll do a landing. So I would like to hear from you guys. What do you call this thing? Do you call it FMS? Do you call it FMC? Do you use the default one? Do you have a third party plug-in? Um, what else would you like to know about the FMC or FMS? And uh, put all that information in the comments below. Please subscribe to my channel. I put a lot of effort into these videos and I hope that you get something from it. And again, look forward. In a few days, I'll have a new video showing you how to use the autopilot. Have a great night and I hope you enjoyed the video.